I found the secret to the owner um, success. It's coffee. It's coffee. This section here, this is our um, yeah, working space where we can do also some special toolings to, to do the harmonicas and the accordions. Also, this is uh, the place where we are doing the prototyping. So if you have new ideas to create something special, then this is made in this, in this uh, uh, working bench here. Oh, okay. So we have a lot of old-fashioned uh, uh, toolings and machines still uh, yeah. uh, existing and also workable. And our people, they like to work with this old-fashioned uh, uh, equipment. But of course, we also have here a CNC controlled machinery to do about some very precise, special things. So this is, uh, and also if you have repairs of the, uh, for example, broken tools, so you can do an uh, emergency immediate uh, yeah. repair of those tools, yeah. so that they are still available but after the repair, go directly back to the production, so mm -hmm. that there is no time lose when then doing the, the production. Okay. What are the uh, the oldest machines that are still being used? I would say they are out of the 40s, 50s, okay. so they are really more than 70 years old now. Wow, uh, yeah. Now this is a big stamping machine where we are doing a lot of our cover plates. So you can see here an example how the cover plates are made. But on the left side you see the marine band. So this is the original raw material stainless steel. And this goes in, inside this machinery and there is a, 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 a separate about many steps to, to realize and finish the, the, the uh, cover plate. So first of all you have the engraving, the, the artwork of the, of the instrument, like marine band, like loose harp. And then the next step is getting the outer dimensions of the cover plate and then in the end to get the form of the cover plate. And then stamp out and then you can see how the angles are. Then you have the the finished cover plate is done. So start from here, raw material, engraving, all the dimensions, the shape of the cover plate, and then the end cut out, and then you have the ready-made marine band cover plate. Is this marine band cover plate, is it the same as when the marine band was invented, or has it changed over the years? It's very close to the original design, yes. <laughs> of course, the first ones, if you remember, they had these Mickey Mouse ears in the, in the, in the oh, side. Oh, yeah. But yeah. now it's, it's, a, it's a complete flat, uh, yeah. flat ear. But uh, the original one had this Mickey Mouse ears. We yeah. also had the 125 years of the anniversary mm -hmm. of the Marine Band head already. Also this very yeah. traditional yeah. Uh, Mickey Mouse ear cow plates. And um, when the harmonicas changed from uh, nails to screws, did the holes change, the sizes of the hole change? Interesting question, because we are still using nails. It looks like screws, but these are still nails. Oh, on the marine bands. Uh, on the yeah. marine bands, the yeah. yeah. traditional one, yeah. the 1896. Yeah. Of course, we are using mm. for the marine band crossover and mm. marine band deluxe, as well as the Thunderbird, mm. of course, screws. Screws, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, right now, this is the standing floor, and right now we are doing the, the cover plates of the rocket harmonica. Yes. Yeah. So see, and there's a big, big um, uh, tooling inside this the standing machine. So the raw material runs from the back side. It says here the big roll with a uh, stainless mm -hmm. steel raw material, and this runs inside the machine. And then, as, as described before, step by step. So and in the end, we cut out and then have the, the mm -hmm. cover plate done. Wow. How many will this produce in a day? Well, if you have the, the total run, so this, uh, there's a capacity, maximum capacity of approximately 6,000 uh, wow. units. Wow. Uh, uh. Okay, and so you can hear, over here you see all the different toolings for the different cover plates. Yes. Yeah. For example, here, this was the marine band, the little lady, the comets, uh, then all the different echoes, so yeah. So all the times different different cover plates all in this in this area. Wow. The reeds are produced, so this is the most secret thing. So uh, the honor reeds are very special because of the alloy, the, the brass material we are using, and also this way how we are producing the reeds with the milling process and then adjusting process and everything. Okay.
Yeah, so this is the equipment we are doing our reeds. First of all, we have to do the, the profiling of the reed. This is done at, at this machine over there. So you know that the raw materials is the breast strap, and then mm -hmm. we do the profile inside the, 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 the breast strap so that the brass strap so that we have a flexible reed afterwards. So this is done here. Mm -hmm. Hello? So who, who has made these machines? Well, these machines are outside companies, but of course the construction and the idea is from us and yeah. we, we find, found a um, machine to, who can do the, the machine we use. Is there um, one company that, that would make all of your machines or have you used lots of different... Depending on, on, the, on the, what we are needing. For, for mm. this one, for this milling machine, we have a different one compared to the stamping machine to come out and single read. Yeah. So this is another company as in the other one. Yeah. So this is milling machine and this now is a stamping machine to cut all the single read. Oh, okay. in the, the stamping machine and okay. afterwards you cut all the, the single single reeds. So the yeah. this is at least scrap so this goes back to the manufacturer of the raw material for the recycling process. Okay. So what we need are the reeds which are stamped out and yeah. the reeds look like this. So and these are the real reeds uh, which which we are using for harmonica. So different yeah. lengths uh, depending on big size or low keys if mm -hmm. you have small reeds this will give a high mm -hmm. frequency the high high notes. Yeah. The um the reeds in the the little lady must be tiny. Yeah, very tiny. Yes, <laughs> also very special made. Yeah, we have yeah. to be very careful to do this because they are so small. Yeah. And then of course these reeds are also te uh, checked regarding the frequency. So we do a uh, we, we plug it on and then we hear oh yes this is has a good good frequency or okay. it's too low too high. Yeah. If it's too low too high, you can adjust yeah. in the milling machine. Yeah. So then we get as close mm -hmm. as possible to the yeah. final frequency. Yeah. And is that when you see uh, if you take the cover plates off your harmonica? You see some of the reeds, how right. you can see that they've been fine-tuned. Exactly, so yeah. this is a fine-tuned process, mm. but of course we mm. try to our very mm. best, although our members here, mm. to be as close as possible to the final frequency. Yeah. So that there's not too much uh, work for mm -hmm. the, during the tuning process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at what point, um, when did Honer expand to, to needing su such a big space? Because presumably, you know, because you've made more and more over the years, yeah. but I would imagine when the company started, you were only making a few harmonicas. I mean, when Hono uh, himself, Matthias Hono, started his business, he was what, in, a, in a house, he was in, in his workshop, uh, only one table, and then he did it very, very simple, I think. And afterwards, of course, the, the business grow and grow. So if you mm. went to the museum, you will see how it grows. And yeah. in the end, we produced what, a year, mm. in the very good years, uh, 20 to 30 million harmonicas mm. a year. So, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he has to, to widen his field and also open up a, a real new uh, factory. This yeah. is in uh, downtown Trossing. And now we are here in the uh, in the industrial area from Trossing. And of course, also with more modern uh, equipment as, as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, so he had to, to uh, get bigger because the demand was much bigger, especially from the US. So the US mm -hmm. people there asking for, for a lot of harmonicas. So yeah. this is still our main business in the mm -hmm. US market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, okay, after the reeds are finished, so they have to be uh, placed by nails. So the rifting coats has to the reed plates, and this is the next step we'll see. Okay. Now. We are doing the, the replates, so to do the, the, the replates for the general dynamic harmonicas as well as for the chromatic harmonicas in tremolo tar. So this is a place to stamp the single slots inside the, the brass material for the replates. It's made here. So the machines here are the machines are okay, quite quite new, normal, all, also old fashioned but still running. But of course the tools to do the cover plates and the, the, the replates, these are very special made. So yeah. especially the the uh, chromatic harmonica replates they need special uh, toolings to do it so very precise mm -hmm. because you need a really a very close tolerance between mm -hmm. the reed and the replate slot and this is very 
high class to do it that, mm -hmm. that close in Paris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this red machine, this is our cleaning machine because if you are doing all the parts, they are oily, so you have to clean them so that they are really, uh, yes, from the surface clean to, mm -hmm. to do the further steps mm -hmm. in production. Yeah. Can I ask, with the the reeds uh, um, and the reed plates, how do you decide how close to gap the reeds? Because you know different different players like the reeds gap close yeah. or further. How have you decided how how to gap yeah. your I harmonica? Mean, this is uh, also the mm. you say the mm. setup of the reed. Mm. If it's too high, mm. of course you mm. lose air. If it's too yeah. close, it could block. Mm. So this is at least a, well, a compromise. How how mm. high and how low? So mm. we know that some special players they always uh, do their individual uh, set, uh, set up of, of the instruments to do the overblows, overdraws and things. Mm. So we have a, a compromise so that it still works when you blow very hard, but yeah. also already the reed reacts when, when the, 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 you only blow very, very little. So yeah. therefore it's, it's important to have a, a certain setup when, uh, so that the reed works in any conditions. Yeah. Hard blowers are mm. only, only with this yeah, small, yeah. small area. Yeah. So that sweet spot right, where... Yes, yeah. 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 I mean, if you need some special adjustments because you are an overblow player, then you always have to, to set up the instruments yeah, uh, yeah. according to your preference. Yeah. So now we are back. It's a little more quiet because now this is a place where we are doing the assembly of the reeds to the reed plate. Okay. It's uh, located here. Hello. Now you see here the, in this cabinet you have the, the different reed lengths, so the, the low reeds and then the year up to the to the to the high reeds. And this is a assortment of ten reeds because no to, to, no twelve reeds because this is uh, just producing the uh, CX12 uh, chromatic reed plates. And uh, this is the naming process. So you see here this is a uh, rivet rivets and they go in this equipment here in this machine. And then the lady is putting on the right reed in the right reed slot on, on the reed plate and then fixing the reed with this uh, rivet here uh, on the reed plate. So this is not the riveting process, it's just the fixing uh, so that the reed is at least at the reed plate, but not, not controlled whether it's in the middle of the slot or not. Mm -hmm. This is the second process. So because of the, the nature of the, the instrument, there's still quite a lot of... Um human uh, manual uh, involvement right. you know in making every harmonica yeah, yeah. absolutely so uh, well this is you see all the harmonicas also the tenoid and tonic harmonicas are really a lot of handcrafting work inside yeah especially the the nailing process the riveting process the adjusting process so to do the setup mm. and of course a very important tuning process everything made by hand so it's not mm. to say well there's a computer machine control mm. machine and mm. then you can do everything by by a machine no it's not you mm. need definitely uh, uh, skilled people mm -hmm. who can do all the, the different working processes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So after this step, the, the reeds are re uh, nailed onto the reed plate, and our next step is uh, the real riveting process to bring the reed exactly in the center of this uh, reed plate yeah. slot. Yeah. And as you can see, the lady now is moving from this place to the next one because our people are, uh, they, they can do multiple uh, functions. So okay. They can do the nailing process, they also can do uh, the adjusting process and the riveting process. Okay. We are now here. Now this, you see, this is a kind of a dark cabinet. Why? So the reason is uh, we have in the back side of this equipment we have a light, mm -hmm. so you can see the the the, the, the gap between the, the reed and the replate slots. Uh, so because of the, the the flashlight from the back side, you see exactly whether the reed is really in the middle of the center or it's too too wide on the left side or right side. So if she realizes, oh yes, now because you can turn a little bit the, this uh, rivet head and then she can switch from the left to the right side and if she sees, oh yes, now this uh, reed is in the center of the replay slot she presses with a foot button and then the, the, the rivets are really uh, pressed together and then the reed is definitely fixed in the center of the replay Wow! 
So you can see for a 10 old diatonic harmonicas, uh, 10, uh, 20 times uh, uh, nailing process, 20 times the riveting process. And after the uh, re uh, riveting process, we are doing the adjustment of the lead. Mm. So this is the third step to when producing a replate. Mm. So she also is plugging a little bit the reed so that she hears mm -hmm. or it gets, it's, it's swinging free, no, yeah. no touching the left or right side. Yeah. So this is a, at least a inspection, yes, it's now in the center. Because if it wasn't in the center, it would go the kind of, it hit the, the, right. the reed plate. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, so the next step is the adjusting process. Morgan. So this is also very, very important, as you mentioned. So if it's too high, you lose air. If it's too tight, uh, then you, you block. They could block if you play very hard, then the, the, the reed sticks inside the reed right? So therefore, the adjustment, depending on the, on the reed, if it's a low reed, it needs a higher adjustment. If it's a very high, a high reed, you need a lower adjustment. And this is, she knows exactly which position the reed needs, depending mm -hmm. also on the key of the instrument. G harmonicas, tenor diatonic, need a higher uh, uh, adjustment of the reeds. If you have an F on the F sharp, re harmonica, very high harmonica, then of course also the adjustment is a little slower, uh, lower compared to the, the G harmonica, for example. So to do this job, you have to know quite a lot about the different keys and the different right. reeds yes. to, to get it right. Right, right, right. Mm. Of course, we also have the so-called what master plates, where the real, the correct adjustment is, is uh, settled, so that you can cross-check. If you are not quite sure, yeah. then you just cross-check with the master reed plate on yeah. this, this height, so I will follow the master reed plate to do the, yeah. the correct offset. Yeah. So this is the third step, also 20 times, 20 times by hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next and final step is then the real tuning of the replay. Okay, let's go see that. Now here we are in special tuning uh, uh, um, cabinet because you know it must be quiet because it's too loud you can't hear whether the frequency is correct or, or not. Now this equipment is, is very old fashioned but still workable and uh, all people enjoy to work with this old, old historical style of, of tuning machines. Now how do this machine work? In the, this equipment you can put on two replates. One replate is the so called master replate with the correct pitch. So this is in, in tune. Now this harmonica in front where the, my colleague is filing the reed, this is uh, the new one so and he is just checking or adjust the reed so that the tuning is exactly the same like the master replate. So just uh, um, yes, try and error, oh it's too low, I have to file a little bit more, now it's more closer to the real frequency and then if it's correct then you only hear one reed because right now you can hear two or three, uh, two, two notes, an uh, 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 out of tune and a correct tuned reed. And he's now filing so that the, the reed is exactly the same like the master replate. So the machine gets air from a from a bellow on the on the on the, on the bottom of the, the machine and he's pressing by feet so that the air can run inside the equipment. Do um, any of the staff are any of the um, staff kind of doing a specialist just just one job or do they all do multiple things? Or, um... Well, I mean the tuning people they are really very skilled to do this because you have a very well trained ear. Yeah. Of course, we also have some some electronical equipment so that you can check whether the tuning is correct by lightning system. Uh -huh. But our our people they they yes they they like it very much to do it by ear and mm. they have really also this is a special training program they are doing to to check whether they are capable to hear the difference between. The out of tune and the correct tune read. So you hear now a very strong tremolo. Yeah. Also hear a slightly yeah. tremolo. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now only one read. Mm. So both both reads mm. are working, but you see only one. I hear one mm. note, so then it's correct tune. Yeah. So this is. A brilliant job Dito is doing. Mm. So how long do we do this, this job? How long does this job? Yeah. Wow, well, he's doing this job 49 years now. Wow. So he's a quite experienced person. Yeah, that's some practice, that. 
So yes, so then the replay is fixed, uh, 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 finished, yes. So we are doing the tuning process twice. So we, we have the first tuning and then uh, set the, the first tuned replays in a cabinet for one week and afterwards mm -hmm. goes to the final uh, final tuning again. So. so after the replay is fixed, then they are mounted and fixed on the on the different combs depending on the on the, on the instruments. Plastic mm -hmm. combs, wooden combs and metal combs. Mm -hmm. and this is the next section we will now mm -hmm. visit. Danke, Dieter. Ja, nein. Danke. Yeah, so now this is uh, the historical model. This is uh, the real Marineman 1896. And this is where the, the finished replates are fixed on the wooden comb. So the wooden comb is pelvic comb and it's fixed by nails. So you can see this equipment is just uh, uh, pressing down the, the, the the button and then the, the nail is running inside the, the retail and then fixed uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the wooden comb. Has the type of wood stayed the same over the years? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So we are always using for, also in the past, they used the, the pale wood co uh, material for, for the wooden combs for the marine band especially. We have three different kinds of woods. This is a pale wood comb, then we have also maple for other models like the tremolo and noctar harmonicas. And uh, we have a so-called dossier. So the dossier is uh, the wood we are using for the blue salt. Okay. So after then the replates, the top replate, bottom replate are fixed with the nails, especially on this Marine Band uh, 8096. Of course, all the other harmon mainly the, all the other harmonicas using nowadays a screws, because for screws it's much more easy for servicing mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, out of tradition, we are using for the 8096 still the, the mm -hmm. nails to fix the cover uh, replates as well as the, the cover plates. Mm -hmm. So in the next one we will see, this is uh, the cover plate, how they are fixed on the on the sandwich, but now it's a different model. This is a, a special 20. Mm -hmm. And then you can see also the, the standard screw and the, 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 mm -hmm. the star nut. And then there's a, a machine controlled screwdriver so that it has the, the mm -hmm. correct tension when, when uh, screwing on. I need one of those machines. Yeah takes me forever to put the, uh, the <laughs> screws back in with my fat fingers. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Then in, in the end, yes, we have the final product. So the marine band and this one, uh, the G, G, of C, uh, G. Mm -hmm. and then of course also all our harmonicas uh, get an end inspection. So this means we're checking all each individual hole, whether it works. So mm -hmm. all, are there some touching reads or some mm -hmm. out of tune reads? Of course, all the harmonicas get an end inspection. This is the next step we will see. Mm -hmm. But the harmonica normally should already work, so. Yeah. Beautiful. Quite good harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all the area where we are doing the end assembly of the harmonicas here. And this area, this is the tenor diatonic harmonica. Over there, this is the chromatic section mm -hmm. where we are doing, uh, put together the chromatic mm -hmm. harmonicas. And this is one cabinet, the guy who's just leaving uh, with the end inspection of the harmonica. Mm -hmm. You really cross check whether everything works uh, mm -hmm. as it should. You know, when you start making a new harmonica, like the Penta Harp, you know, a, a relatively new um, kind of harmonica, do you have to, you know, have a new space for that or and, and um, extra employees, or do you use some of the, their time? sort of shift it over from doing the special 20 or whatever to doing yeah, the... Yeah, I mean, this is important. Idea. It's not to say, well, mm. this is a special mm. team who can mm. only do the pen, new Penta mm. Harp or other models. So they all they can do all the different models. So yeah. This is important because if you have a, a lot of people who are getting sick, for example, then how, yeah. who can do this? If you can't have quali don't have qualified mm. persons who do exactly at that moment mm. this model, then you had a, a big trouble. So yeah. for our people really, they have multiple functions. They can do the nailing process. They can do the, the yes, the 
screw up the cover plates ever mm. since. Of course, yeah. but especially the, the tuning, this is special mm. because yeah. there you meet very special people who hear the difference in their Yeah, tune yeah. Tune yeah. I hear Stevie. Stevie Wombo, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, also our people, they, they like to, to, to hear music <laughs> and sometimes you really hear the, the Stevie Wonder playing on the chromatic harmonica, this is nice. I was hoping he might walk around the corner. <laughs> hey Stevie! <laughs> right, okay. So this is also an assembly of, of uh, harmonicas in this way. The new, new pentaharp. Ah. also, also uh, fixed here. Hello, good morning. Also, but the system is more or less the same like on the Special 20 because the basic is, is the Special 20 but of course this is special tuning for the pentaharp harmonica and the blue plastic comb so this makes a difference from the Special 20 to the pentaharp but pentaharp because of its tuning is very very um, yes, interesting for guitar players because they can immediately play the typical blues riffs uh, because the tuning is the layout is so that you can play the, the the blues scale without need to have the, the capability to do all the banding things. So it's very simple to play on this harmonica blues. So and also the same like on the special training and all the other harmonicas, they get an end inspection and this is an exception with the mouth visit. This is a beautiful wall you have yeah. here of all the different harmonicas from over the years. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Now this place, this is also a quiet uh, cabinet and there is a machine inside. This machine also blow and draw, blow and draw by, a, by an mm -hmm. uh, electric machine in the, in the bottom. And the, uh, the lady is checking whether the cords are okay or not. She has also a very well trained ear, mm -hmm. so she hears exactly whether there is an out of tune read mm -hmm. or there is a missing one note because mm. of a touching read. Yeah. She realized, and then if there is something happens, she put it on the on the side. Then mm -hmm. can do the repair herself, or she is getting back the, the batch because she says shit. There seems to be always the same mistake. Mm. It goes back to the production to to correct them the the, the serious production so that mm. everything works as it should. Good morning. Yeah. Sounds like a beginner harmonica player just yeah. breathing through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So something happened, she, she put it on side, so she'll do the correction so that oh. really we can be rest assured that everything leaving our house is really in top quality. I bet this poor lady has this sound in her, a, a, a sleep, a sleeping at night, you just hear this. <laughs> so she, she's, she... Tief, tief and fished. <laughs> very deep and very, 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 yes. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Okay, so this is the end inspection. After this process, uh, the harmonicas get polished, so also to clean them and to make them hygienic, yeah. uh, so that there is no problem. Yeah. And then packing the the, uh, yeah. the, the, the case and as well as yeah. the packaging. I found the secret to the owner um, success. It's coffee. It's coffee. On Cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> it's the secret. You told me you'd show me the secret. <laughs> Thank That's the first harmonica I ever played, the Big River. Big River yeah, that's the first one I played. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the instruments pass the end control mm. and they are qualified. Those goes to the next stage where the harmonicas are polished and clean. I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so this is a, yeah, it's a traditional marine band. In the, in the key of C, and uh, as you mentioned, asked in the beginning, mm. when did we uh, move from uh, mm. uh, nails to screws? These are still nails, but uh, they have a kind of what? A screw, screw head, if you can see it. Yeah. But it's not a screw, it's a nail. Yes. Yeah. 
because of the out of tradition of the, the 8096. Yeah. Is that the only the only harmonica you make with with screws? With, uh, sorry, with, with nails. nails. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, the tremolo harmonicas and the tough harmonicas, some of them are still mm. nailed the couple plates, but for the tenor diatonic harmonica, this mm. is the only one we are yeah. using the, the nails. Yeah, that is a beautiful box of harmonicas. Wow. Yeah. So now they are polished and then they are going to the next section where they are doing the, at least the, the packaging inside the, the plastic Good case. Good morning. But the plastic cases are already already done. So yeah. here inside the, the harmonica and also the, the instruction booklet and everything. Yeah. And then after this it goes into the into the uh, cardboard packaging and yeah. Of course, also we have the ceiling stickers, so this is important so that if you buy a new one, so mm. that you can see, oh yes, this is a real, I'm not sure whether you can see it, this is a real original one, this is the this ceiling sticker. Yeah. One. So, yeah. Just to protect it, it's a hygienic, uh, a completely new harmonica. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so and that's it. Then we pack them into a packing unit, so in this uh, black boxes, uh, there are six of these harmonicas inside these boxes. Mm -hmm. And they go to the warehouse, and then we mm -hmm. ship all those instruments to mm -hmm. our worldwide partners. So our pa uh, we send mm -hmm. approximately to 85, eight, up to 90 mm -hmm. countries. You will get uh, mm -hmm. our own harmonicas. I'm pretty sure that mm -hmm. you also will get mm -hmm. a whole harmonica in Iceland, at least maybe in Greenland. I don't yeah. know. So, <laughs> so I'll I'll give you my home address, and you can just send all of these to me. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. But, but then we have all the. <laughs> in the key of C, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is more or less a, the, a quick run mm -hmm. through the production of the Hona harmonicas. As see, you said the, from the beginning when we are doing the reeds and the couple plates and also the nailing, riveting process so to finish the replates, the tuning process, very important. Mm -hmm. And then the assembly and nailing the reed plates onto the comb mm -hmm. and also the couple plates on, screw them up to the, the sandwich. And then end inspection, end control, and then polishing and packaging, and that's it. Wow. The finished product.